try to get out of here.
All right, the trick to having your tracks not be frozen is to clean this out of here before this mud freezes like concrete. So this tool here usually works pretty well. All right, so now when I go to use this next time, it should actually move. do my first day. Looks good. How do you like the depth? Probably about perfect then, right? 
Damn good to me. Alright, so I just finished installing this 500 gallon underground propane tank. So that went very smoothly, that was very easy digging. So the tank's buried right there, the line's going right here to the house. So now the propane company can finish hooking everything up. This is going to be servicing the heat, a propane stove, and a propane fireplace. So I got the caution tape in there to make sure no one ever digs this up accidentally in the future but that would be pretty obvious because you I've, these this is what a pro underground propane tank looks like sometimes these things are green but they're usually like that it even says caution propane right on the top of it and obviously the line is going right there so even if that tape wasn't in there nobody should have dug that up um, when I initially got here the plan was almost to wrap the propane line around the house but that would have been a mistake because we would have been crossing three other utilities the well line the electric to the well line and the electric and cable that services the house so um, it's definitely better that we came in there so I also I guess I'll just make this one video because um, the, so the wells all done here too um, I didn't get a shot of them dropping the pump down in there because I wasn't here when they did it. I wish I had because that probably would have been interesting. Because I think this is this well's ended up pretty deep. I think like 500 feet. So that's hooked up over there as well. And um, but it's great that the propane stuff is done because that was kind of holding stuff up here because the builders here. Are at the point where they're sheet rocking or they wanted to sheet rock at least and they couldn't do it until the house had heat but the house didn't have heat because the propane tank wasn't in and at least these guys finally showed up because there was a few other propane companies that were out here first and just kind of made excuses and just delayed it and just didn't get stuck didn't get it done so um, that's good the last thing I did here 
was last time I was here, I this this was I got to do the septic. That's pretty much next, and it was so wet in here, so I dug all these trenches to dry it up, and I have it all filmed. I just haven't uploaded it yet because it's not really complete and. Editing this stuff takes a lot of time, so, you know, I have a lot of things filmed right now, not just on this job, but other jobs too that just aren't uploaded yet because they're not edited yet, and and because the a nice ending isn't filmed yet either, but, alright, so this trench, you know, there's still a lot of water flowing here, but at least the ground is really starting to look a lot drier everywhere, like before, you know, even just walking right where I'm walking right now you know you were you were sinking especially even I remember this spot here in particular you know it's still a little wet but you know I remember someone sinking up to their knees right here and having to get someone else to help them pull them out so so it's good that this is drying up all right so uh I guess I'm all done here for today so that's that's great that propane's finally done so I'm going to head back to another job, but I guess the next video on this site will be probably the septic, but that's probably not going to be... Actually, I could start that soon. I need to, because it's pretty dry now, so... All right, I'll try to schedule that on my calendar pretty soon, and that pile of firewood's got to leave, too, because that's right in the way, so... And that, everyone's always saying, like, oh, why do you burn and chip so much stuff? The reason is, because I always end up with piles of firewood like this, and... I usually can't find people that want it. You know, I, sometimes I would just bring it to my house to get it out of the way, but this is really far away. It's not worth me bringing this all the way to my house, so I'm not going to do that. But um, I, I guess I need to put an ad in on Craigslist or something to get rid of this wood because this is right in the way. There's quite a bit here too. All right, and another thing people are probably going to mention in the comments, um, the last few times I've done an underground propane tank, usually I'll put usually I'll put sand around the tank. Like the last one in particular, we pretty much had to hammer to get the tank in. But here, th we, that wasn't needed here. I'm sure some people are going to say that. But, um, you know, there's, there's not a rock in here. I mean, there's a few small ones, and they're pretty round, but this is pretty sandy, nice dirt, so it really wasn't needed in this spot. And, um, you know, the whole key is not to have boulders against the tank, you know. A few little pebbles or whatever is not going to hurt anything, or nice sand is fine. And um, about the tank floating up, someone mentioned that, too. The... Um, if if you're installing the tank in like a wetland or something where the water table is going to be very high like at the surface of the, the ground you'd want to do something like have a concrete pad in this case actually that would have been an issue here but the the footing drains are right here so that's taking care of a lot of groundwater from that level and this site was pretty wet so I dug a, a deep drainage ditch here too so that's that's also lower in the water table of this whole site down quite a bit so here I have it all dug you know nice and decorative um, I still got to get rid of that pile of dirt and then I got to clean up this trench here because this needs to be pretty much a permanent trench because to keep this site dry enough but you can see there's still still water in there all right and um the last video I put up talking about how to fuel your equipment. I mentioned this at the very end. I said I found this nozzle with the gauge on it and it was only 40 bucks. And normally an auto stop nozzle is like 200 and meters by themselves are like 200. So finding it built into one piece was a pretty good deal. So here it is here. So let's install it and give it a try. So this is the one I'm replacing. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just, uh, you know, having the the gauge on it seems so cool so because before before I had no way to measure how much fuel I'd be dispensing so um, you know I would just never know so it's gonna be interesting to to know how much fuel gets used on jobs because that's you know one of the main expenses all 
All right, so this uh, nozzle has a one inch NPT on it and my hose is three quarter. So I've got this bushing here to adapt it. All right, let's give it a try. I guess to reset it, let me set the display. All right, display resets it. So reset it. That's counting. This this pump is like really really slow, but. All right, so it's supposed to be auto stop. Let's just leave it here. You don't auto stop? It's not, huh? Well, doesn't auto stop very well. <laughs> All right, well, I guess I just put 10.59 gallons in there. So let's uh, try to measure the accuracy of this thing. All right, let's see how accurate it is. So I'm assuming that line is five gallons. Let's reset it. All right, so there's five gallons there. And um, yeah, I guess that's a I can't sit in level. I mean, yeah, that's a bit. All right, so it seems like it's accurate. Let me try this auto stop again. No, that's not, that's pumping. All right, well, this nozzle counts, but it does not auto stop. All right, so just a quick update on that. So this was the original ad here. It said automatic shutoff and I contacted the seller and um, he gave me a partial refund and he fixed the ad.